Hi guys, James here from Hayes Machinery and today we're going to show you the Nugent Livestock Trailer. We've got here the twin axle 12 foot with sheet deck and here we've got the 14 foot tri-axle with no deck. So firstly I'm going to walk you around the trailer and show you about all the feature benefits that come as standard with the Nugent Livestock Trailer. As with all Nugent trailers, chassis is fully welded all the way through including the spring hangers. So rather than the spring hanger being bolted to the chassis, it's welded so you don't get fatigue and overling holes over time like you do get with many other trailers. And also as standard, as with other Nugent trailers, you get the parabolic equaliser, which is the dual drive system patented by Nugent, where you've got a shock absorber underneath the leaf spring, which takes out your general road noise and vibration. And then another larger shock absorber above the leaf spring, so if you go through any drains or potholes or something else unexpected, it takes all that energy that comes off of the road up through your wheel suspension, through your trailer, into your livestock, or onto your vehicle that you're towing it with. So all Nugent trailers come as standard with a spare wheel, which are 195 for 75 for 16s, and that's the same on all the Nugent livestock trailer range right the way through. Fitted is the not standard hitch, which is lockable on the front, and with a heavy duty jockey wheel on the back. So on all tri-axle trailers, they come as standard with the aluminium mud guards all the way through, which we think they look absolutely brilliant. Nice strong mud guard. If you do accidentally knock them, they're easy to bend back into shape again. Whereas on the twin axles, they come as standard with the plastic mud guard, but you can have the optional upgrade of the aluminium mud guard if you require. LED lights all the way around the trailer, including the reversing light as standard with the 13 pin socket on the front of the trailer which can be adapted for the seven pin if required, but you do lose re reversing light if you haven't got the 13 pin connector. Along with the welded chassis, all the way back through the trailer, you've also got the welded front hoop. So your front hoop and your back hoop are actually welded to the chassis. So from where the leaf springs join on, straight to the top of your roof, is a fully welded construction. So if you've got your box on the back and your uprights like this, in other trailers you might notice that they get flex in them over time, whereas the Nugent is welded in the bottom on both the front and the back hoop, so you don't get that fatigue over time. Part of Nugent's iconic design is their front vent flaps. So I've got three flaps in the front of this trailer, so these just literally unclip like so, and pop up round, and then you can clip them in from the top. Ideal for letting ventilation into your livestock, or being able to reduce the drag that you find in your trailer from when it's behind your vehicle. And also, Nugent's are split into three. So with it being split into three, if you tow your livestock trailer behind your tractor on occasions, you'll find that the mud will flick up off the tractor wheels. But with the two outside ones closed, you can still gain ventilation into your livestock, but stop all the mud and debris going into the back of the box. So even with the front vent flaps open, you've got these solid bars through the front here to stop any livestock getting out or any cows poking their heads through. So for UK standard to be able to have the vents on the side of the trailer all the way up through is the nice, good, proper, solid hinges and catches there to be able to do that. Obviously, if you're in Southern Ireland, you don't need to have the vents, or if you're just taking cattle, you can have the bottom vents closed in if required. So you've got the top access door and the bottom access door. As you'll see with the Nugent trailers, and I'll show you again in a second inside, but you've got a two by two steel box going all the way around the outside of the trailer and along the front panel. So if there's any movement in from cattle inside the box, they're not forcing the sides all the time, allowing the weakness in the rivets and everything going through the trailer. So that makes a massive difference to the strength of the trailer. You've got the welded front hoop, welded back hoop, and then you've got this bar bolted from the front to the back of the trailer, creating a very strong rigid trail all the way around. So this here is a standard tail door, which would come with your livestock trailer if you bought it without decks. As you can see, it's just nice, strong, reinforced bars all the way down through with the aluminium planking going up through like that. And then you've got your screw type latches here to be able to do that up tight, to be able to make sure that that's not going anywhere. And that also stops the rattle as well because it does it up really nice and tight up against the back of the box. As opposed to the one with the decks in, you can see it's very different on the back. Slightly bigger sections here with holes cut out to save on weight. But this is so that you've got the internal ramp which then comes up so you can feed the top deck of your livestock box. So let's take a look inside. So you'll see from the Nugent trailers that their load height is slightly higher than most other trailers. This gives a massive advantage, especially when loading sheep, because as they're looking into the box, they're looking into a flat surface or a flatter surface, 
rather than the steeper ramp on the back first bit of the tailboard. So it allows you to get the sheep on there so you can drive them up to be able to get them into the box a lot easier. So on the tailboard with regards to the sheep decks, you've also got recesses here to be able to put your loading gates down into so that they don't move in or out of the box. So going up into the cattle box, 14 foot triaxle, you've got plenty of head height in here. You know, I'm six foot two and there's still another couple inches above my head here, so there's a nice lot of room in the back of the box. The boxes are also available in the seven foot high versions as well if you want to load horses. And then you can also get the centre partition for the horses as well as an added extra. As standard, all Nugent livestock boxes come with centre partitions. So with a cattle trailer over 12 foot, or from 12 foot and 14 foot, you'll get the standard passing gate with a trailer as standard because it is a legal requirement. And if you have the sheep decks, you'll also get the lower partition as standard and the top one, all included with the decks. But you can also buy an extra passing gate if you wish. So if you have a 14 foot box and you want to split it into three compartments, you can always order another one to be able to put in to be able to part them. And they just simply open like this on the hinge and then can go back round and fix around that way or when it's in the centre of the box, you can pull that one round, like so, and you can clip it into there. And that's now nice and secure to be able to keep that back out of the way. So you move this gate wherever you want to up through for partitioning. In the 14 foot, you've got six different slots all the way up through, and in the 12 foot, you've got five slots all the way up through, and the 10 foot, you've got four slots all the way up through. All Nugent livestock trailers come as standard with a one-piece floor, so from the back of the trailer to the front of the trailer, there's no joins or creases in that 3mm aluminium checker plate that are join or become misaligned over time or start to warp. So one big sheet of checker plate all the way through on all the trailers. So that can give you a demonstration of how the decks go down and then back up again. So the first job, first of all, pull your bolts out here. And you've got a clip here. Pull that up through there. And you can just slide out that, up over, and take that to the back of the trailer. And then you can gain access to your bars in behind, which slot out here like so. And then you just literally put them down like so, and just lean them up on the side for now. On these, the trough goes here. So as your deck comes down, you can see it needs somewhere to sit. The other way around, it wouldn't have anywhere to put that on. Just make sure that one goes the right way around. As you go, clip your clips all back in again because you won't need them again now until you fold the ramps back up again and they're out of the way for any livestock that are coming in the trailer. Take one bar at a time, spinning around and clipping that into each piece there. And then your final one you can put right in. That bar can now not go anywhere. So now with all the bars in the diagonal position, you've got plenty of room to manoeuvre around the trailer. I've seen plenty of people before put all these bars in place, be at the front of the trailer and have to crawl out underneath them, normally hitting your back. In this way, it's very easy to be able to get in and out of the trailer without having to be a trapeze artist. So now, once you've got that bar in place, you can then lift out your lynch pin on the front there, and on that. Again, clipping your lynch pins back in to keep them nice and safe and out of the way. And then that one folds down round like so and lands onto that front bar. And now you want to release the lynch pins on the side there, pulling that one forward and then just pulling it back a little bit and clipping your lynch pin back in again. Otherwise, once that side's down, you can't reach that one. And then this one here, again, do the same, clipping your lynch pin back in again and stepping over the bars going back through, lift up your bars and clip them in and they just literally slot into those recesses on the other side. And then with this one, you do it with the trough facing inwards. So you latch there, so as you put that in, you'll see what that's got to sit with regards to the other deck. You can now lower the left-hand side down. Like so. Again, clipping a linchpin back in again. And then lower the right-hand side down. Let the decks down. And then you can fold over your centerpiece. 
There we have your main decks all the way up through. And then while you're here, clip in your linchpin. And if you grab your top deck ramp, it's probably the fiddliest piece, but you want to sort of put it in underneath your decks you've got to start with, pull it in round like so, slide it back into the hole on the left, and then up over, and that will slot in there. And you've got your pin then to go in there and keep all of that in place. And you fold that one up round, and use the bolts to keep it in. No wires, cables, chains, anything like that. It is all nice and fixed firmly into the side of the trailer. And then when you're on this side of the ramp, put some weight onto your ramp and lift up your catches, fold them round. Same on this side, lift up that piece there, fold that around, pop it back down again. If you walk back off of the ramp, And then on the right hand side, you'll find a clip there, lift that up over to that bolt, and that will lock that ramp in place. You can now safely walk up your ramp. And to do so, walk up across, it's not going anywhere, it's all fixed in, and you can then unbolt the top ramp, and drop that down, like so. All ready to drive your sheep up. So to disassemble all your deck system is exactly the same, just in reverse. So again, walk up your ramp, Lift that up round, clip that in, back down again, release the clip on the right hand side, so it's facing downwards, pull back up the ramp, and always do that carefully, leaning your weight forward, and the ramp will go back down again. You've just got your two catches on each side, sorry, one catch on each side, move back across, now it's firmly back in again. You can just let this one down around, like so. And if you release your pin there on the right hand side, pop that out and leave that hanging for a second. And you'll pull that one back across there and that will come up. Pull it back towards the back of the box. And then on the left, you can then pull it out of the socket on the left and move that round to the side of the trailer. Keep that stowed for now. And then your main decks, center bit again, folds up over, goes down. Release the linch pin. So when you lift that up, you should actually push that up like so and clip your linchpin in. And the same on this side, push the ramp up across, clip your linchpin down and you're now able to go up through and again do exactly the same again, just leaving them on the angle for now so you can step over them. Many people before keep climbing in under them once they've done them. It makes it very much hard work, but doing it like this will save a lot of the pain. And then your front deck just lifts up and clips into the top there with the two linchpins. And your front bar goes in there, and slots in there like so, goes down to the bottom. And then you can spin around, take the next bar off without having to step over anything. And with your rear cross member, there's only one way that one can go in here. But it'll be pretty obvious when you come to do it. That one goes in like that. And if you grab your final ramp piece, and this one slots in the same way as it does on the back of the trailer, so there's no need to flip it round. Remove the pin. Slot it in and up. Pop the pin back in again. and then your bolts at the bottom just locate into the side of the trailer. And there you have, you've got your trailer back to a cattle trailer again. So that's pretty much the basics of the livestock trailers from Nugent. Just to run through the range that are available, these style trailers here are available between eight feet and 14 feet, and then they also do wheels inbound, so rather than the wheels on the side, they do wheels underneath but they're not available with decks, so it's just for cattle trailers. And then they also do the seven foot high versions of these. So again, if you want to put horses in them, you can get the partition for the middle, or if you just need a little bit more height in your trailer. So if you're taller than me at 6'2", like I said, it's probably about 6'4", in the back of the trailer, which is plenty of room for most people. But there we are. That is pretty much the basic to the trailer, but if you've got any questions or queries, please do not hesitate to give us a call or visit our website for more information or come and have a look for yourself. You know, we're doing lots of these trailers now. They're being very, very popular. People like the strength of the Nugent trailer 
and the versatility of it and because of the dual drive system on the suspension, people are loving how smooth they ride behind their vehicle. Any questions, give us a shout. Thank you very much.